Players are loaded on up, dropping in. I see Scram, I see Nako dropping in. Nako actually qualified in his last match from round three. He clutched it up with the victory royale. This is it, Jacob. Definitely is. I, I got just as excited with Naku over on EU. You know, even though I am Jacob PR, I got a little Spain in me as well. So that's one of the brothers over on EU that I kind of root for. And already you're seeing a little bit of a struggle, but it is going to be a trade. Strapped is going to be the first one that goes down. The bait and switch. Maybank goes and takes charge. And Naku and Maybank go ahead and win the first exchange of our finals lobbies. Huge way to start off the momentum. But look, the good news for Scram, as we talked about it, there's five different lobbies going on. Normally, in a set one lobby format, they'd have to wait the whole match to play game two. But now, they can just queue on up again. All the other players that maybe it didn't go their way in the early game will get into the same match, and they can get right back into the action. So you kind of can keep that momentum going, but hopefully, you want it to be positive momentum and not momentum of losing the early game. Yeah, and this you're exactly seeing the double-edged sword of these style of lobbies. One team contested, one team uncontested over towards Classy Courts. And there's a ton of loot over on that side of the map. So uncontested is truly going to be a blessing. But let's talk about the entrance of our POI Snooty Steps. You go ahead and get access to that mythic hammer pump. You get access to the medallion as well, which grants you shields up to 50 as long as you don't have any similar effect towards the mini. As Axe Force is already down, Roban trying to go ahead and make up for lost time. And, and the tricky thing for him, a little bit of a blessing and a curse, is because there's so many NPCs nearby, they may not exactly know where he's positioned at. You can see how many duos were in the surrounding area as well, making it even that much more difficult to make your decisions early on. But for Marco and Vision here, they've decided to quickly keep on rotating through, continuing with their loot path. What's crucial in these higher tier lobbies is having that early game planned out, having your loot path planned out and the rotations depending on your opponents. But when you're in five different lobbies, you don't know exactly which opponents you're going to be facing against. So you can't calculate as much. Yeah, looking at the drop spot, you've seen some of these POIs having as much as five different players. But Snowy's goes down. Great effort trying to break into the box, but it's just not enough. A trade and things Ooh. turn on his side just like that. He owes and gets a big double elimination. Purgeons coming up big, saving the day for him and Snowy. And that's the thing as well. We talk about so many different teams being able to potentially contest these POIs. It is so hard to prepare for one team, let alone the potential for five different teams. And that's exactly how things will play out. Things shaking up at Reckless Railways. Gotta be careful there. As we switch on over, fan favorites, Mr. Savage Mongrel who look to have a pretty peaceful start here. No elims to their name, but a lot of time to fish around. We saw, like Kami and Seti, you can use those Shield Breaker EMPs to loot or fish more efficiently, sorry. But switching back over to Eyedrop here alongside Nebs, got themselves into an engagement. The good news is they did get that first elimination, gives them that player advantage, two versus one but you can see Moneymaker putting on his boxing gloves might be ready for that third party soon. Yeah, I think he's trying to look for some heals so that way he could make that trek over towards the southern portion where they are fighting at. But that is going to be the blessing is the fact that he was so weak to begin with. He doesn't have the same flexibility as he normally would. Nebs and I drop able to win the exchange for now. It's not over just yet, as Luis looks like he's just trying to hide bypass because his own will push them out eventually. Seti and Cami, the split drop, but there's so much action going around. Seti's going to be the first one knocked. That's Nova who gets credit for that one, and that is a big elimination early. You heard both Mini Miner and Levin kind of talk about the success they've already been finding for a possible third consecutive year. And for them, I wouldn't be too worried with them going down early because I feel like Cami, with the success he's had and the experience he's able to gain over the last couple of years it's not too much of a worry but it does put at least a little bit of a tweak in their game plan look it might mess up the momentum a bit but like you said they're veterans they know how to handle these situations they've been in these situations countless times but you know you gotta you gotta say cammy's gotta be feeling a bit nervous crouched up in a corner here <laughs> you, you never really know <laughs> what your opponent might be thinking good news is we have the pros of seeing that mini map with the opponents on it so we can see that they have disengaged and Kami now has a bit more flexibility but 
The question is, how long is he going to be staying here? As the zone closes in, next zone appears. The surrounding area gets smaller and smaller, and the opponents get closer and closer. And this is what happens in these style of lobbies. I, I think a lot of players feel a different amount of confidence than they normally would. You tune into Eclipse and Dexy getting another elimination on the Wolvex. His teammate long gone. You got to imagine that might be him on the minimap on the outskirts towards the west side. Just trying to find some loot. Have plenty of time in this game to try to backtrack for that reboot card. As long as Eclipse and Dexy choose not to camp it, but a nice snipe like that's going to give him confidence to continue to push on over. But not just yet in their plan. That team is going to be able to disengage, keep their game going for Eclipse and Dexy. At least that's something for their surge. We can see what happened here with Kami. As it looks like it might... Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> I thought it was over. I thought it was over. They jumped over Kami. They used him like a little stepping stone to get over the ridge. And they still didn't see him, Jacob. I just imagine Seti in his ear. Don't be suspicious. Don't be <laughs> suspicious as Kami just narrowly escapes. And those are the moments right there, though. Sometimes it's a big impact moment. You get elimination, a huge refresh. Well, it's that moment right there. If Kami and Seti could come back, we'll say, hey, it was because he hid just like a rock between a mountain, any crevice you can hang on to. He found some success as I drop a Nebs rotating around the map. And you can see, I, I think they have their lines of sight towards the right side of the overall map where there's a less people actually contesting it, plus there's static launch pads to give you that mobility. All about making use of that natural environmental mobility, launch pads, rifts, you've got it all, but right now mobility isn't the key factor for iDrop here as he's forced into a situation where he does not have the advantage. He has to make something happen to come out on top. He does have the positional one, but with the one versus two, it makes it that much more difficult. As he tries to make it his engagement here, drops down below to the dirt, close to the water, but is he gonna be able to make it? How hungry is his prey right now? Looks like he's just kind of getting pushed around a little bit from everybody else, not really having the flexibility to choose what he wants to do. And they actually do see him trying to heal up. So they gotta know that he is weak. So now they're on the chase, especially with the grapple blade. They're gonna be able to cover distance rather quickly. And the cut back from Eyedrop, trying to catch him off guard. And this is his best chance. Try to separate both of these players into two separate 1v1s, but the damage is just insurmountable. Too much for Eyedrop to overcome. He's gonna go down and get sent back to the lobby for another game to queue up. Only so much you can do, but the non-stop action continues as Kami now. He was camouflaged into the rock, but looks like when he's in the water, he can't turn into a fish as now they found it. The hut continues, another chase. Good news, has the grapple blade, has that mobility to try and escape, but so does his opponents as they continue to hunt Kami down. How long will this go on for? Being out of the zone, delaying as much as possible as Kami gets cracked and now that is ultimately gonna become his fate. Honestly, Takata, that doesn't worry me too much. You know, Kami and Seti, they've had slow starts before and still have been able to burst up the leaderboard in no time. But we'll see, we'll see how the day goes on because a different format, different set of skills is gonna be required overall as Kriox just seems to be under siege down low, even explosions popping off. Needs a little help there to kind of finish that one off. Even QB taking some shots from the high ground. And this is what happens when you don't or aren't able to really pinpoint your opponent's location right out of the gate. They get that early advantage in terms of damage. I just want to see them end this fight rather quickly and not let these eliminations escape through their hands. The two versus two. Good news is there's not too many opponents close by, so it should be a fair fight for the time being. The question is, like you said, how long? Will they continue to take these shots before making more of an aggressive play? As it looks like Chekeni, Ryuga, they might want to just disengage. They have the grapple blades. They don't want to take any risks. They did have the HP and shield advantage, had their opponents boxed down below. Feeling a bit scared, but you know, you don't want to take these risks if they're unnecessary. As now they continue to climb up the snowy mountain and can look around and kind of see how their opponents have been rotating and what options they might have even for a bit more tags. But back to Mr. Savage Mongrel. Looks like they got a cache. 
Still no elims to their name. Wondering how much damage they might have at this point. They have crossed quite a few duos. That looks like they're already on their surge path. Up above on ridges, mountains, hills, anywhere. That gives them a good line of sight to their opponents. But for Mongrel and Savage, they're just going to keep rotating through. It's interesting to see their loadout that they're not really carrying any mobility as we jump into another fight. Sardox is going to go down, but even even the team right before our very eyes, Shady and Crayer, they have their grapple blades. That's what, something we've, we've seen almost all season long, whether you're using your flow berry or flow berry fizz rotates, you mix it with a grappled launch pad or a crash pad. There's at least something in your inventory that allows you to close or create distance rather quickly. So interesting to see how some of these teams in general will perform without it. And you're seeing so many different variations, even Uwe choosing to grab the grapple blade, mix it in with a sniper. And I think even with the nerfs to the sniper in the right person's hands, it still packs a punch and can change a game plan in a moment's notice. I mean, when you have that one shot to the head, even with the new change in bullet drop, travel time, these players, they're veterans, they're elite in Fortnite competitive. They spend the time practicing to hit those shots. And all it takes is that one headshot to give you a huge advantage. The upper hand and the engagement as we switch over to Fistroki Hijo now. Looking like they want a little bit of that action, that chaos as they continue to take pop shots. Polish Jeff with his position. They're almost like in a square split. Got to be careful for all angles. Ooh. He's going to try to break into the box. Fastroki was on the tail end of that one, but luckily for him, he's narrowly able to escape and create some distance. Hyjo's there to reunite, and that's what's going to be important. Have to be able to play defensively. Jeff almost taking first wall. Cone's there. The fire's going to be shot back, but Jeff goes down and up out at the same time to take down his opponents, and that's the most important thing with the fight. It's changing directions, changing these different elevations so your opponent doesn't know exactly where you're coming from, and that was played absolutely perfect. Hold well, Jeff with that confidence too. You saw it. I mean, Hydro and Stroke were taking some pop shots, were playing slow, but Jeff did not care. Went straight in, played for that aggression. That's now mid map of mid map objective showing up here. Island has appeared. Snowzy now looking to get on up as Artist and Hootie though are close by, taking shots. Huge connections. From artist here, but not enough to play aggressive, but it is enough to hopefully start capturing the flag and maintain the box up here. Yep. And you can see they're gonna be the first team to actually go for Loot Island. Everybody else right now, if it's in your mind to not try to contest that, you need to make that conscientious decision, decision rather quickly because fourth zone, fifth zone, when Rift Island has the chance to be inside, the next couple will force Rift Island outside of the zone, whether if it's a far pull on the 50-50 or a short pull centering up, these teams start, need to start making that conscientious decision around their positioning and where they're actually gonna land here in the zone. Some may have a little bit more flexibility than others as be outside of zone for now does have two med kits so he's gonna have an opportunity to make it in but with two different teams acting like gatekeepers how far he's gonna make it in is a whole different question difficulty levels increase in here as this rotate continues but taking a back look at Vico pink taking out Kylie here this is how gripey lost his duo partner and look at this Jacob the action might be starting all it oh. takes is one shot from the Reaper Send his opponents to the Shadow Realm. Does not connect. As now, you can see the quick decision to just continue rotating. When you have this sniper rifle in hand, if you're unable to connect that first shot, it's not worth it to make a full engagement from the scenario without even a tag. And you can see how quickly they change their mind as now they just continue farming on up, rotating. Only six shots as well in the chamber for Mr. Savage. But they're they're relaxed. You know, they're just rotating, doing their thing, not stressed yet. It's like you could see their experience in real time. You know, you can easily try to go ahead and play aggressive W key, especially in a lobby style just like this, but they know exactly which fights they want to take and which ones they don't. As we tune back into Vico and Pink, 
they found that elimination onto Gripey. So they get sent back to the lobby. So their game here in this first one has come to an end. But luckily they can queue right back on up and continue things off. But this is how they were able to get the elimination. The multiple angles. Pink down low. Vinko coming from the top. And they just sandwich him and eat him up. The two on one is always difficult. Now four elims for Vigo and Pink, so they're feeling pretty good getting here into the later half of the mid game. Meanwhile, active pixel, the duel, going straight into the engagement here, cracking their opponent, leaving them very low, but you gotta be careful wow. of your surroundings. Aim is not a missing factor for the enemies around them, as now they're forced to take a step back, heal up, get the shield back, no medallion to them, so they do have to use the minis, the bigs, which isn't infinite. Like, if they were to have the medallion like Zayn here, you can see healing up to 50. They can just drop it back and forth between each other, depending on who needs shield, who doesn't. As now, what a loadout as well. Mythic, striker AR, grapple blade, sniper, <laughs> medallion. I mean, that's the position you want to be in. Yeah, the only thing that's kind of missing now between the duo is some HP to kind of regain. One of them actually needs it. The other one not so much, but you can see everybody kind of getting jam-packed closer and closer together. And this is the stage of the game to where everybody is forced to be in close proximity with one another. So those exchanges that you were freely able to take early on in the game are not as safe as they once were. So being able to peek through the cone like CZB and Nathan are currently doing. Getting some information of where everybody's going to be before the next zone pulls all the way towards the western side of the map in the first 50-50 of the day. Now the duo's planning out. What's that decision? What's that rotate going to look like? You can see at the bottom right, a lot of them choosing to go up north. Hoping to not find as many duos looking back at them who have already been placed inside of the zone. For Strand and Kovacs though. They were fortunate enough to pull that zone. As now they have the freedom to look around at the duos rotating in, take some shots, do some damage. And I ask you a question real quick. The zone's on the 50-50 right now. Obviously that Eastern Tide is going to get stacked. Does Takata move over when the zone <laughs> opens up? Like what situation makes you go for that space versus not going for the space? Look, if you're comfortable on loot, if you're comfortable on damage, and you don't want to hold these people on the edge, you can play for that full position. If you have the materials to possibly take an advantageous position on the moving zones, you can go early. But for the a lot of people who've already built up their boxes, who don't want to use more materials to rotate, they just have the freedom to stay here, take those shots, do the damage. And it's all depending on the situation they were in beforehand and the play style they want to continue with. But when you okay. don't have options, and your duos like artists like Hudi here, who are gonna make use of this crash pad, Ooh. rotate, possibly combining the flowberry. We talked about it. <laughs> Mini talked about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, <laughs> their idea has been shot down. Literally, no more crash pad left. Have to use a second one now, as their opponents keep taking shots at it. You gotta and be that's cautious. the thing, man. It, it, <laughs> you can think outside of the box all you want, but if your crash pad is also outside of that box, that is what's going to happen 10 times out of 10. It just goes to show how aware everybody is in this lobby and how much they're learning with each and every one of these new techniques that do come out. So, I mean, great wherewithal for them to learn it, but even better for the lobby to kind of spot that one out and shut it down before it started is Sky Move. Able to find a huge impact elimination there on a player separated from his duo. Because him being a solo, those materials, all that resources is so crucial for the rest of this game. Back on Mongrel and Mr. Savage now. Already positioned themselves in zone. Still have a good amount of consumables, good amount of materials. I love that they're positioned here on the ridge as well, on the mountain. So they are elevated compared to a majority of the other duos who are rotating on under the train tracks. And it gives them that advantage if the zone does start pulling more towards the east. As now reinforcements come through, they've got a lot of space to work with. This might be too soon to tell, but I see the zone right now going over towards 
the train tracks. We might have our first FNCS victory train lap. If somebody's <laughs> able to come out on top. And that's one of the things you really just have to be conscientious of a lot of these changes. Because you're, if you're in that zone, especially towards moving zones, and you're trying to build and the train comes crashing through and you're not prepared with elevation or at least a plan B, that's when everything is going to come crumbling sideways. As you see in the elimination feed, Ooh. Polish Asian Jeff gets taken down. Unfortunate, with, especially with how good of a move he just pulled. But you're seeing just a couple of teams over on this side of zone. Elevation's already been found by Cringe and Noms. Some of the most elevation Ooh. in the lobby. There might be a few teams around that have just a little bit more. Train, you can see, is going through the tracks right now. Hopefully not going to run into any of the opponents here that were built up on the train tracks. I'd hope they would have made that decision beforehand. As now Kays, though, in the chaos. Bullets coming in from all the duos that are already based up. But Nova and his duo partner will pick up that knock, will refresh all that loot that they were missing, but fortunately enough, they aren't missing too much at all. Have the three med kits, have the shields, have the full materials, as now zone has appeared, eighth zone, southwest side of the map here. Good news from the majority of the duos down south, but the few that were up north, you can see now deciding if they rotate on that dead side to just go through the pile of players who are stacked up on the east. Yeah, you talked about that west side being the slower side. There's one duo that's just taking that opportunity in stride, rotating all the way around. Nobody even really looking in their direction throughout the majority of this rotate. Finally, Nova and Phalanx are going to get the memo, begin to rotate themselves, but 93 above the damage threshold. They don't have to worry about surge for now, but it's something that will be looming in the back of their mind until a couple more players can go down with high ground that isn't so high for now Ugwe and TJ they're able to get the first knock on a couple of players trying to rotate in towards zone and that is what happens when you beat everybody to the punch you have the luxury of looking back and just lighting up the playing field already eight elims for that duo but a duo that was looking so bright now the light has darkened as pink is left alone Vico with his four elims taken out good news using that flowberry fizz to get that mobility boost rotate on to the less congested side of the zone and it even pulled towards pink here it's huge zone wise but after getting cracked now he wants to move positions doesn't want to get pushed by that duo big shield comes through has a med kit has the flow berry pink should be able to last a good amount of time here yeah, great decision to slide down the mountain away from the zone. But what that did is moved him closer to other players so he wasn't going to be the focus. Because you know as well as I do, if you see one person tagging up a solo, you're just going to join the fray, even if you don't get the elimination. So Pink really thinking outside of the box, but high ground continues to be maintained by Uwe and TJ as they're just looking back to the side of zone, trying to tag anybody up before they make a chance to get there. But Mongrel and Savage, they've been scathing by a smooth and simple game, but they could be waiting for moments like this. Almost max mats for Mongrel alone. Huge amount of materials, low amount of damage. Good news is that shouldn't be a difficulty for this duo. Now on the side of the zone where all these other players are rotating through, opening up the floor to find those options, to find those tags, get that damage. Unfortunately enough, or fortunately enough, actually, they go up to 16 above, but how long are they going to be able to hold that high ground? Not long. Has been taken. <laughs> Marco, fire bro, now up above in the clouds, looking down below, connecting to those structures, making sure they can keep this elevated position. No Flowberry Fizz, no Grapple Blade, though, so they can't go too high. Only six builds to work with as well as they scatter through. Kind of called out their worst case scenario no mobility no way to really caps themselves especially with the amount of elevation they have but we move into our top 20 cringe here as a solo he lost noms across the way but pink goes down as well joins them back into the lobby they're going to quickly try to queue up for another game as mongrel and mr savage a quick quiet when it comes to eliminations but this is the moment they could have a chance to pop off quickly staying towards the front side of the zone above everybody else which gives them opportunities to peek down but savage gets ahead of himself momentarily luckily he's able to get bailed out by mongrel huge refresh recuperating materials such a good amount they could start looking up a little bit they don't know that the high ground is low on mats but if they start taking pop shots see they're in wood it could open up that opportunity to take height as ugwe on the contrary taking down the ground now four elims to his name duo partner with three high ground 
trying to scavenge everything they can manage up top. Nobody is taking shots at them. Nobody is contesting them. They have freedom right now. But for how long? Three builds to work with. Drop below. Now crucial in need of a refresh. Yeah, this is where Fire Hunter has to go big. Marco actually did go down right next to him. This is not a good look. And now he's stuck by himself. No builds, no real opportunity. He's going to have to make something out of nothing here. And you see the thought process in action, staggering himself out of zone. Ugwe and TJ go down, but Mongrel and Savage, with the mats that they've had and held on to for so long, they finally take the high ground and at the perfect moment, too. This is what they needed. They've used the materials to get up above, but they have it. They have height. They have the heal up with the floppers. They just need to get a bit more eliminations. I mean, zero elim to the name. You know they want that combination of placement as Phalanx now trying to play the heal off. It's so dominant in this current meta. Using these med kits to stay up in zone. Give your time to think a little bit. Figure out the next move. As Savage now has decided it's Elim time. It's time to pick up these eliminations. Three already to his name in an instant as he continues back above. Yeah, big pick up on those Siphon mats. Reunites with Mongro as well at the top of the mountain. Everybody else down low in the mud, struggling to make it through. Kuriyama's gonna go down. Phalic still being able to hold on strong. Ivansik is able to pop that first of two med kits, but time is running down. Final five teams left alive with a couple more being dropped off towards the backside of the zone. Debuel trying to reunite and hold on for his teammates, but another player is gonna be dropped off. Mr. Savage and Mongrel, the return of Mongrel himself in his debut match in our FNCS Week 1 finals leaves it to savage towards the back side of zone going for the heal off but will he even need it yes he will mongo's not able to connect but this one is done and dusted not enough heals as mr savage wins this one by a mile played by the books in the current meta two med kits four floppers they had all the heals they needed mongrel just had to disrupt the low ground take shots do damage try and elim as many opponents as possible and that is exactly what happened game one the duo is looking strong with the vr yeah throughout the course of that game it was mongrel that had the floppers for so long in his inventory you see the shield fields there for mr savage but as soon as they got to the last point of the game they switched up their win condition they switched up their roles and played it to perfection to win this game even with mongrel going down right towards the outside there was more than enough heals on the back of mr savage for him to last a lifetime that's gonna be game one for our eu superstars but i'm gonna throw it on over to three other superstars levin mini and adam to break it all down Thank you very much, fellas. Mongrel and Mr. Savage, can you believe? We talked about it on the top of the show, and they delivered the goods there, uh, winning the first game here on the broadcast. We were talking about this, fellas. We were talking, saying, hey, you know, they've done well. They've kind of managed to utilize, rotate well. They've kept above Storm Surge. You know, no, no elimination to speak of, but they've done enough. Levin, suddenly they, they, they deliver big time. They go big all the way, get the victory out, three eliminations. I mean, job done. Great start to the competition. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Hundreds and <laughs> thousands of people watching all around the world and they delivered the goods. I mean, it is Fortnite heritage we are seeing here on our screens. Mr. Savage and Mongrel doing so, so well, Mini. And I think for me, the most impressive thing for me throughout this game was seeing Mr. Savage at work in that end game. The way he led them throughout some of those layers, the height tick towards the end as well. Like, I, I, I really do think we are seeing a Mr. Savage that is possessed. He, he wants to show, no, I'm not just here to focus on content and play with Mongrel and have fun. I'm here to win. Yeah, because Mr. Savage, right, he's developing into such a great IGL. He's been such a great IGL for a long time as well. And for a little bit ago, he sort of was thinking, maybe I go into the more fragger role. Maybe I go into playing with pink and playing in that more aggressive fragger style role. But no, he's leading the way absolutely perfectly right now. He deserves so much credit for the way he's doing it. But I also want to give Mongrel some credit as well in that end game because they were below on surge, 50 below there at one point. And it's very, very easy, particularly for a, a, a player that hasn't had the experience of the last couple of chapters in Mongrel, just to go, I'm just going to hop in. I'm just going to straight into a box i'm just gonna get this surge and just almost tunnel vision your way to try and get above surge he didn't do that he didn't let his emotions get the better of him he followed savage perfectly well and the high ground take was made to absolute perfection really great stuff from this duo and let's be real it was written in the stars game one mongrel and savage couldn't ask for any more Mon Mongrel yeah, with a bit of discipline, man. Maybe yeah, the ice baths are working finally, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> the, the tactics. The art of it, indeed. 
They are indeed. Uh, let's see exactly though how that affects things in our competition here as we check out the standings on our leaderboard. And this is how it has loads of teams competing right now, vying for points here. Uh, and level, we can already see that in fourth position, Mongol and Savage just saw are already in fourth place, but there's loads of other teams scoring big as well. Yeah, 100%. I think no surprises with some of the names I'm looking at there, the likes of Janice and Flixy, uh, Synod and Vanyak, who did very well in the cash cut before this, unfortunately. You know, didn't get the win like they would have wanted. But a lot of nice names here to start off the competition. And I think the key thing that we will sort of have to note for everybody, Mini, is the fact that a lot of these games, right, because of the nature of how many players are playing in the different lobbies, you might have one game where you're uncon, things look good. Next yeah. game, boom, someone's contesting you, everything derailed, the whole game plan has to change. Yeah, that really is a great point because you just never know what's going to happen in each of the lobbies, right? It's not even just the teams that are contesting you versus not contesting you. It's also the whole landscape of the lobby around you, yeah. right? So many different lobbies play out in different ways. One game you could be uncontested, but a team rotates in quickly and tries to take you out. Another game you could be contested by three or four teams. Anything can happen. So in this particular style of lobbies, they have to be very, very careful and keep that momentum going. Yeah, let's have a look at some um, highlights from our previous game as well, just to kind of catch you up to speed if you just joined us here as well. Uh, let's take a look at this right now. I mean, fellas, experience obviously plays an important part of this too. You must take that into account because, as you said, it is incredible that so many teams being featured on the official broadcast here uh, in the lobbies right now. And, you know, Mongrel and, you know, Mr. Savage, they, they know how to they know how to manage these games so effectively, as do other teams out there as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I look at, you know, Fibro and Marco Hill on our, t on our screens for people who maybe aren't too familiar. These are two players very well experienced in the FNCS here in EU. Fibro, especially a player who, you know, many seasons ago, we'd see him up on high ground, so we know he likes to play up here. It's a matter of, you know, this season as a duo, do those two have the right fundamentals to be able to hold off against the likes of the Mongrels and, and Mr. Savages who are going to try to take it off of them? Yeah, height is such a big moment and a big potential for wins this season, right? If you do get that high ground at the right moment, you have those heals, it's almost a guaranteed win with that heal off at the end. So you can see what they're trying to do there in that end game. You can see they're trying to set up for height very, very well, but there was that other team that came in and tried to spoil the party. And that's where things can get a little bit disjointed, particularly if your teammate is not quite as confident in fighting or maybe the duo's not quite got that chemistry locked down. That's where they're going to struggle with taking out and choosing who to take out, taking out individual players, trying to go for those high ground takes and holds in this instance. So I think we'll see a little bit more from that duo and I'm excited to see how players like Marco, players like Fibro can develop throughout the rest of this weekend. Yeah, we, we see top of our, our leaderboard there as well. 12 eliminations in the first game there for Janice's duo, which is which is incredible, really, when you think about it. You know, straight off the bat, we saw you know three eliminations from Mr. Savage and Mongrel was one thing, but 12 in that very first game. Having that kind of you know catapult you to the top there, if you can sustain that, you know, for the course of the next couple of hours, I mean, you're in a really good position going into week two, 11. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know if I, I would even think about sustaining that. That's a really good start, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, if you can sustain that, we might have to have a different com uh, conversation. You might be about to win the whole FNCS if you can sustain that level of play. But I mean, look, two very experienced players there. Yeah, two very experienced players. Yeah. It's not going to be easy to do, though. As we just mentioned, the lobbies are going to be different. 12 eliminations is good. Can they do it in the next few games? We'll have to wait and see how it goes.